Hey guys, so I just wanted to come on here really quick, just really quick, take a break from making gameplay videos just really, really quick. We'll go back to the Halo stuff in just a moment. But I wanted to get on here really quick because there was a brand new update with the things going on with the Veil Guard. So they did a Q&A on Discord. I missed it entirely, but luckily I am part of the Dragon Age, the Veil Guard group on Facebook. And somebody was so kindly to just put all the footnotes onto a post on Facebook so I just wanted to go over them really like really quick with you guys um and talk more about it because I am just so excited reading all these footnotes and reading everything that the that the directors had to say about the game just makes me even much more excited like I don't even know if that was just English that I spoke right now but I am just so excited so here I am I have like my sushi bowl I went to get like a poke bowl and like I love the poke bowls that I go to a place that I I love the place I go to. So here I am. Let me take a bite real quick. I'm starving. And let's get into it. So I don't know if you can see that right now, but it's so it says, you know, miss the Q&A on Discord. Well, Discord user Cake had an excellent breakdown. So here is the breakdown, as you guys can see right now. So the first thing to notice is that they mentioned that there is interruptible and resumable banter, more banter than other games incorporating all aspects of companion story. So it does say that it's interruptible. So like you can just interrupt them kind of how like in Fallout 4 when people are just keep on going and going, your character's like, uh huh, uh huh, uh huh, okay, go ahead. So one thing I found really interesting here is that your companions have a life outside of you and your missions. So no longer are we gonna be running around Skyhold seeing Solus and he's just kind of doing the same thing over and over again. Like, what are you doing? And no longer are we gonna be seeing, I don't know, Varric just sitting there or like standing there by the fireplace. We're gonna be seeing them doing stuff with their lives no longer is sarah gonna be cooped up in her room doing nothing like what is she doing in there like come out so i just find that really interesting and i like that a lot because i don't know it brings more life into the game let's keep going you can pick the backstory slash rp your rook and their lives before being recruited so kind of like how in origins you can pick um the backstory with your character they're doing they're incorporating that same exact dynamic into this new game so game begins in Minrathas. I found that to be interesting and I'm really excited about that. Well, you know, we're going to be skipping ahead because some of the things like I don't really understand. So we're going to skip ahead. But of course, you guys have that right there in your face so you guys can read it if you want. So handcrafted content, mission based, but locations open up. Do great side quests. No fetch quests. Oh my gosh. The many fetch quests of Inquisition was the most absurd thing and the most annoying why am i gonna go find your ox sir mr farmer you're the one that lost him i'm just really excited that there's just there's gonna be life to this game there's not gonna be hey go get that thing hey go get that other thing get wolf pelt get whatever else pelt get something for me that i could not have gotten and it's probably been so long since i've had that thing but since you're here right now you might as well get it i'm really excited about this so it says emphasis on characters trying tying into story threads so i want to take this as everything being done in the veil guard is canonical with every single thing that happened in origins dragon age 2 and dragon age inquisition which is amazing i don't know if you guys have noticed yet i don't know if it's on here but the veil guard does take place 10 years after inquisition no no, no i'm sorry 10 years after trespasser which is 12 years after inquisition so keep that in mind so unfortunately there is no longer they're they're gonna be um doing away with the keep like i know it's like one of the best ways to have everything kind of in order and um organized but you do get to pick things before starting the game so i imagine it's going to be some kind of cloud system that they're going to be using and they're going to be doing the same thing that they did in like mass effect 2 when like if you skipped mass effect 1 because i mean why would you play mass effect 1 i mean you could like you know to save rex anyway this is not the point when you play mass effect 2 and you skip mass effect 1 mass effect 2 will give you kind of like a comic book showing of what happened in the first game and you kind of pick and choose the, the the big decisions that mass effect one had and you put it in mass effect two and then the 
the story then picks up from there. So this is the part that got me the most hype. Inky returns. Inky is short for Inquisitor, which means the Inquisitor returns. I don't know what state she's gonna return in or they, because you know, I'm only talking about for, from experience and my Inquisitor was a she. I don't know what state they're gonna return in. They didn't get really give much detail about that, but I'm just really excited because they're returning. That's the that's the biggest thing I want, I, I care about, is that they're returning. So companions have unique specializations but fall into mage, rogue, or warrior. So pretty much, I mean, like it's kind of the same thing as in, that Inquisition. Someone was either mage or rogue or warrior. Um, I can't really think of another specialization. I think it was just mage, rogue, or warrior. Correct me if I'm wrong. But that's really good. So like they're not just kind of like cookie cutter and like, whatever oh archer i'm sorry i thought i totally forgot about archer so i'm just really really excited about this 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 brings it more life it brings more immersion to the game Belara is a mage so Belara, as you guys know already or if you haven't known already she is a veil jumper so she's gonna be in and out the veil i guess and so she is a mage and i keep wanting to say neve nev is off is she's only ice mage so i guess there's like different little subcategories of the unique specializations. She's a mage and then like Neve is an ice mage. Kind of how like in Avatar The Last Airbender, Zuko of course is a firebender and Azula was kind of like a lightning bender. If you guys, you know, make if that makes sense. So each character has a backstory. They exist as their own people outside of conversations, which I absolutely adore that. I absolutely adore that so they're they're not just gonna be waiting on bated breath for you to come and rescue them and tell them hey it's time to come with me let's go to do our missions or whatever we have to do they're gonna be doing other things okay they're not just waiting on us they're gonna be having a life okay which i love so much and they're gonna have their own backstory so we're gonna get to know more about our companions which is what i'm really excited for healing spells are back i guess they did away with that oh yes they did i don't think inquisition had a healing spell i think they just had the the healing potions and then you can upgrade them and stuff um i don't remember them having a healing spell so i mean hey they're back tactics are back and more important for higher difficulties so if you are one of those psychopathic people who love playing games on legendary mode, there will be some challenges for you to fulfill when you do this game. So the next thing is combat pause, knock overhead, display strategic information on enemies, vulnerabilities, elemental weaknesses, resistances, and enhancements. So I'm what I, I guess what I'm like grasping from this is that if we, like when we're like, I don't really know, I don't know how to explain this. There's gonna be some way that they're to incorporate some kind of like system where you can see um people's vulnerabilities or enhancements or something like that i don't know but i'm excited for it nonetheless tactical decision making takes form of ability usage between rook and his companions detonation combos so i think this is the part where they said that you can like merge to um, two skills together to make one big thing. I am so psyched for this. Like, I don't understand the people who I, okay, I get their point, but I don't understand fully the people who are like, oh, down with this game. This game sucks, you know, whatever. Like, look at all the things that they're doing. I understand it's not the same Origins game. I understand that wholeheartedly, and I feel that for you. I do love Origins too, but look at what they're giving us. Like, I don't know about you guys, but seeing this just makes me so excited, and I'm just like, what are these people talking about? So you can choose your pronouns and gender pronouns, and I'm sorry, gender pronouns and gender can be different which is cool for the people who don't really see themselves as like you know male or female it's just very inclusive and i like that a lot so rook gets three ability shots but more actions in the wheel ultimate ability associated with class specialization items that function like abilities buff enhancements in the form of runes so this is just it plays more into the kind of combat system that we're going to be looking forward to when we see this game which like the fact that there's still no release date on there come on guys come on give us something so here it is veil guard 10 years since trespasser solace's ritual set up we come in towards the end of that ritual solace is still bald i love that 
I love how she put that in there. Solos is still bald. Yes, I love that. Once you get a chance to play ancient elves turned bald after thousands of years, you might see what Solos looks like in the past. This is amazing, right? If we get to see like a little glimpse of how Solos used to look like in the past, I probably might. I don't even know, cry, I don't even know. I probably will do something. So companions have a wider range of appearances that you can find for them. Some appearances tied directly to their narrative. I just so excited. They're making these companions more alive. They're not just kind of NPCs that kind of like do nothing and their life is nothing. Like they're giving us like quality stuff right here. Like what is this? This is amazing. You get to visit a lot of locations that were hinted at, not completely filling out the map. Some new things to hint at, more to do at Kyle Short Sharok. So locations that were hinted at or were kind of like told in story mode in between Origins, Dragon Age 2, Inquisition, maybe even the books, we might be able to visit those locations in Veilguard. Like I, I, that, I, that's awesome. Tone wheels can pick consistent tone. Emotion wheel can pick specific emotions. Choice wheel, no specific emotion, but want to make a choice. They want players to understand how much they are picking which is really smart if you think about it i'm not gonna make a random choice if there's no outcome that i think like if, I, if i'm making like a bad choice i don't want them to be like a good outcome like give me the bad outcome i asked for this so it says here rp choices and outcomes for conversations how events unfold huge pri priority keep that in mind each companion has a romance arc can be romanced by all genders but are not player sexual they won't change their preferences based on what you're playing they have their own fully fleshed out identities this is the part that i was kind of looking more forward to i really enjoy games that have npcs that are romanceable but they have their own preferences like i'm not much of a fan of games that are player sexual I think it's really awesome and amazing to have NPCs be their own person and decide for themselves and be like, eh, I'm not into you because I like something else. Kind of like how Dorian, Dorian was a gay man and he loved men. He did not romance. You can't romance him if you're a woman. I'm sorry. And I really, really like that because it makes them unique. If you don't pursue a romance with a companion, they'll build, they'll build romance with each other. I like that. So this game is kind of encouraging you to romance somebody. Just do it. Just romance somebody. Pick someone. I know that like my Inquisitor was a big soulless lover. I am a soulless lover. I love soulless till the end, okay? Till the end. So it's gonna be really different to be Rook and try to romance somebody that's not soulless, knowing that he's in the game. I'm gonna feel like I'm cheating on him, but I mean, I'm sure I'll find somebody. Knowing that Lace, Harding, and Tash get together, if you don't get with them, Harding, I'm, com I'm coming for you, girl. I am coming for you. Elvin Warden and Veil, vale hopper face tattoos specific to their personalities i like that another thing that makes them unique so varic has been adventuring for a while now we'll see him in more context so that's what i was waiting for too i want to see what these people were doing for 10 years like what were you doing for 10 years like what was happening and why did solace pick now to do his ritual like why did he pick now i really hope that comes clear in the game because i have questions okay so here's 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 the part guys here here's the part inky will appear in the flesh can customize them including new customization options they will be your inky so please remember the choices and the things that you did in inquisition if you haven't played inquisition now play it right now please remember the face so that you can copy and paste it to this new game i mean you have about I don't know, it's June now, it said fall. I wanna say four months until the game comes out, okay? So you have a little bit of time, but keep that in mind because you're gonna be choosing your inky. You're gonna be customizing your inky and make sure that inky 
is the inquisition inky okay this is very important guys very important and if you decide not then who cares they will be solace and inky stories tied together this is the part this is the part that makes me scream and this is the part that i'm trying so hard not to scream right now because you will get to see what happens between your inquisitor and Solace, if they romance each other, by the way, if they romance each other, you get to see what happens to them. And I just, I, you don't, you don't understand. You don't understand if, unless you are a Solace girly, you don't understand Soul Level in Hell. You don't. Like, it's just, it, it's mind consuming. I love it so much. I need this game right now. So right now the devs are 100% focused on the base game, making it as complete as they can. No micro transactions. Thank you devs. Devs, if you're watching this, I love you. Thank you so much for this. This is amazing. No battle passes and you don't have to connect online. I love this. So many games out there are now focusing on nothing but dinero, okay? Dinero, el dinero, okay? I love how the devs were like, nah, we're not doing that. We're not doing that to our fans. And I appreciate that. Thank you, devs. I love you. There will be a transmog system. So you can change the appearance of your armor. You can change like the colors and the things that are added onto your armor kind of how in like a world of warcraft you can you know you have the same armor class but you can change like different things about your armor and how it looks like so it's like a lot of customization in this game which i'm really excited for so you can play as a dwarf and the world reacts to race and backstory unique conversation options just like kind of how in Baldur's Gate and also Inquisition too, they kind of reacted to who you were and what you did and your backstory and who you were. And I just said that. I like that a lot. I love that detail. I love how it says glorious beards. That's a really good fact. You can piss off, I like this, you can piss off companions. It will take some time away, but are dealing with the biggest threat that Thetis has ever seen, they will come back, unless. So you can really piss off your companions, kind of how like in Boulder's Grade 3, if you piss off your companions much like a lot, they'll just be like, see ya, see ya. I like how they added that, that detail into the game. That makes a whole lot of difference because it just makes it even more real. Guys, I'm telling you, this game is a masterpiece so far. I can't wait to play it. I need it right now. More story for Harding tends to be someone who has the most insight into who Solus was. Quests, immediately relevant to what you're doing, saving the world. Provides perspective on characters and world. Everything is handcrafted, intentional. No more gathering stupid shards, bro. Really, Inquisition? Really? Shards? You wanted me to do all that for freaking shards? And armor set that came with that wasn't even that good. Locations can fundamentally change based on the decisions that you make. Locations will be different depending on what you do. My mind can't wrap around that segment because in my mind, I'm like, if I'm gonna go to freaking, I don't know, Walmart, and that's already in the script of the game, no matter what I do, I'm still gonna have to go to Walmart, you know? But I love how depending on the decision that you make decides, is a deciding factor if, you know, you can go to Walmart, or you might go to freaking Target down the street. So this is the part I don't understand. It says if Rook dies, then game over. I mean, isn't that with like every game? If you die, it's game over. You can spec your companions to revive you. Cannot switch characters, but engage with their actions. So how in Inquisition, you can be Solus, or you can play as Cole, or you can play as Blackwall, you can play as Cassandra. Anybody within your party in Inquisition, you can play as. But I guess in this game, you can only engage with their actions, which I don't mind at all. I don't care about playing as my companions, okay? I care about playing as me. So it's kind of like how in Mass Effect, um, you can have your two companions, you know, in my case, it's always Garrus and Liara. I'm sorry, it just happens to be that way. And you can engage with their actions. You can pull up the skill tree and, you know, you can upgrade them and you can make them like throw bombs or something like that, whatever you want, but you don't play as them. So this is the, the Solus that you saw in the gameplay is the same Solus you love or hate. It has the same writer as before, same voice actor. 
okay shout out to the voice actor Solus okay and the same writer so nothing has changed I hope Solus ends up being the same kind of personality and character that we loved or Hayden and we can embrace that in this new game we're not gonna be seeing a whole new person and be like this is the guy that you picked that Solus no this is the same guy the story of who will leave who we leave in the fade will not show up in the veil guard oh you're talking about Alistair or Shroud oh sorry guys no appearance from them the only person i'm like wondering if we're gonna see is cole right because he goes back to the fade after the game i wonder if we're gonna see him you know because we're gonna be in the fade anyway so there's no mounts addressed a need in inquisition we don't have and veil guard because inquisition was an open world game and sometimes annoying because the hinterlands is probably the most largest map and the most annoying by the way and you needed i guess in a way you needed a mount in, in, in inquisition i never really used my mount i mean i had it and they were nice and pretty and stuff but i never really used it because i never really had to i liked going on foot anyway so this is good mostly because i did hear that Veilguard is they kind of put it more linear which i really really like and enjoy and appreciate so this is good dual wielding part of road kit not warrior warrior two h sword and shield so it's a two-handed warrior so it's a sword and shield which is cool and then John Epler gets pleasantly surprised on a daily basis with the dev team. They are very excited for us to see what they've done. I am really excited to see what they've done. Like, I think we're all excited to see what they've done. And this is amazing news. I love this so much. I am so excited for this. Like, words cannot express how excited I am for this game to release. It needs to release right now. So devs, please give us a little crumb. Give us a crumb. At least like give us a hint of the month that it starts with the letter, please. Like give us a freaking hint. We need it really bad. So thank y'all for watching and hope to see you guys on the next episode. Let me know in the comments. Are you guys for Solus or against Solus? And if you're against Solus, you're wrong.